HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, I talk with school committee candidate John Graziano, Roy McDowell of Legacy Farms, and Frank Durso sat down with town moderator Dr. Bruce Carlin on HCAM's point of order to talk about Article 30 on the town meeting warrant. We have highlights from Hiller's softball, and we will get you up to date on the efforts of the Hopkinton Relay for Life. But first, a handful of Hopkinton Middle School students were at the Massachusetts State House in Boston to take part in the Boston Marathon wreath ceremony. The ceremony started in 1984, in which the Consulate General of Greece in Boston presented the Boston Athletic Association with olive branch wreaths to crown the winners of the Boston Marathon. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nick Cordes, and I serve on the Education Committee of the Alpha Omega Council. It is my pleasure to introduce the winners of the 2015 Marathon Essay Competition. The essays of these 10 young people were selected for special recognition out of almost 600 essays that were written. There are excerpts from each of them in the program, and I encourage you to read them. Students, you should be very proud of the effort you made to research and write this essay. We hope that this is just the first of many awards you receive as you continue your studies. So it gives me great pleasure to call each of you forward by grade and alphabetical order to acknowledge and reward your outstanding effort. And please, let's hold our applause until all students have been called. Zachary Blair. Zachary is a sixth grader at Hawkington Middle School. He is an honor student with a passion for history. He's a member of the Student Council, enjoys acting, football and baseball. He would like to go to law school and possibly go into politics. Uh, Alexander Foreman is another young sixth grader at Hockington Middle School who could not be with us tonight. Olivia Jones. Olivia is a sixth grader at Hockington Middle School. She enjoys playing field hockey and tennis and playing piano. She loves to read mystery novels and directs and stars in iMovies that she makes herself. She is currently rehearsing for the school musical, Anything Goes. Congratulations. Will Dion. Some of you may recognize Will from last year. Uh, Will is a seventh grader at Hopkinton Middle School. He keeps active by running track and cross country and playing soccer. He enjoys backpacking and hiking. Over April break, he will be hiking part of the Appalachian Trail in Virginia. He would like to be a writer or teacher when he grows up. Eva Kurvila. Eva is also making a repeat appearance here from last year. Eva is an eighth grader at Hopkinton Middle School. She loves to photograph, Instagram, and Google chat with her friends. She loves field hockey and soccer. 
and she hopes to pursue computer engineering in the future. Congratulations to all of these children. Let's give them a wonderful round of applause. Things. Where are the kids that just won these essays? Pace yourself in life. You've done way too much. You know? I'm still trying to accomplish what you guys accomplished 12, 13 years. Easy. And who are the repeat winners? Eva and Will? Come on, you're showing off now. That's a little bit much. <laughs> Middle school is about, you know, not going to school, hanging out, just being, having fun, watching games. That's a joke. That's, that was my middle school. I apologize. Uh, yeah, that'll get me in trouble. I apologize again on behalf of that. Be on the lookout for the full 2015 Boston Marathon wreath ceremony airing on HCAM's News Focus. If approved, Article 30 on the town meeting warrant would allow Legacy Farms to replace 200,000 square feet of commercial space with 180 age-restricted housing units. Roy McDowell of Legacy Farms sat down with town moderator Dr. Bruce Carlin and spoke of his support for the plan and why it would benefit the town. Planning board member Frank Durso spoke against the plan on HCAM's point of order. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit more about what we're hoping to do with Article 30, Elaine? This article would uh, raise the cap on the number of dwelling units can be on the property uh, by 180, and these would be age-restricted, over 55 units. Um, they would be um, allowed in the commercial subdistrict on the north side of Legacy. From a new point of view, and again, this is from not our numbers, but the town's consultants, the generation of net revenue on a commercial basis on that particular parcel would be $160,000 a year. Under our proposal, doing uh, age-restricted over 55 housing, that parcel with some adjustments in the number of single-family homes in the project would bring the net revenue to $1.5 million a year, net. So we're talking about five, excuse me, $1.5 million versus $160,000, a huge delta, point one. Point two, significantly less traffic. We all know commercial properties generate more traffic than residential. The numbers are projected to be up to 74% less traffic for this particular component of the project for the age restricted as opposed to the uh, commercial component. And significantly less peak hour traffic, which is what we all worry about, whether it be seven to nine in the morning or three to five at night, significantly less traffic. The other nice feature here is there'll be no school-aged children attributable to the budget, so it won't have an effect on school children. If anything, it'll be slightly less school children because we're eliminating the 35 single-family homes, four- and five-bedroom homes on the north side, and that will be sprinkled through the two- and three-bedroom condominiums. So when we look at the big picture of less traffic, significantly more revenue, no negative impact on the school systems. I think it's a very, very wise proposal. Seven years ago, we agreed at town meeting that uh, the commercial space uh, would be an important component of this, and that's what passed at town meeting. Uh, this measure came up last year and, and failed, and, and one of the reasons uh, that I, I su I'm, I'm against it is because I think that the commercial space is a key part of what a lot of people voted for seven years ago, and I know times change. Uh, nothing's been developed there because the process of building and developing Legacy Park, uh, Legacy uh, South occurred, now you're doing Legacy North, and you're saying seven years uh, later, maybe the commercial space isn't as viable as senior housing. Um, but the reason I oppose making this change is that I think you should stick to the original plans and have commercial space because Wilson Street is going to be a lot more accessible uh, for traffic uh, for rush hour traffic because the Legacy Park uh, North Road is we called the bypass road in, in previously uh, will take a lot of traffic off of uh, 135 and bring it on to uh, Wilson Street and on to uh, Route 85. Um, so that will eliminate a lot of traffic from Route 135 if people are going to uh, work there. Uh, if we have uh, dense population density that close to the gas tanks, I'm a little concerned because the gas tanks are a concern. We shouldn't be putting houses so very close to that area. Uh, it's more of a concern if you have uh, 180 age-restricted homes packed right into uh, an area that close to the gas tanks. I think the original plan to put office space there, 
is more viable and safer for people uh, if they're working. If there's a problem with the gas tanks, you know, that's, we're all in trouble. Uh, but I think it's less of a calamity if, if, it's a, if it's an office space. I'd like to retain the original plan from seven years ago to put office space in there, bring more jobs to Hopkinton, and increase the commercial tax base to reduce the residential tax base. The annual town meeting, which takes place at the Hopkinton Middle School Auditorium, will air live on HCAM on Monday, May 4th, Tuesday, May 5th, and on Wednesday, May 6th, if needed. Town meeting starts at 7 p.m. each day. For more information on the annual town meeting, head over to the town website, hopkingtonma.gov. A couple short weeks after the town meeting, it will be time for the town election. Monday, May 18th, is the big day for the town election. And as of right now, school committee and the Parks and Recreation Commission are the only contested races. I recently sat down with school committee candidate, John Graziano. I'm here with school committee candidate, John Graziano, who is seeking his second term with the school committee. John, welcome to HCAM News. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Now, can you give us some background information about yourself and things you do in the community? Sure. Um, my wife, Erin, and I moved to Hopkinton uh, about five years ago. We have three children, all in elementary school. Um, a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 4-year-old. And um, within the community, in addition to being a member of the school committee, I'm also on the elementary school building committee, working towards the solution for Center School. Um, apart from serving on town committees, I also enjoy coaching soccer. Um, I coach both of my youngest two children. I coach their teams this spring. Um, and that's pretty much all I have time for, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a lot on your plate already. Uh, now, what do you like about being part of the school committee most? So um, I, I like being on the school committee. I, I, when I decided to run, I was looking for an opportunity um, to serve the community. When we decided to make Hopkinton our home five years ago, I really wanted to be a part of the community and be active, um, not just sort of accepting the services that the community provide, but being able to work towards them. Um, Education's always been a passion of mine. I'm the son of a school teacher. I married a, a teacher um, as well. She used to teach at Elmwood, actually. Um, so education has always been something that's important to me. So I enjoy being able to work with our educators and help uh, make our school system better. All right, well, Hopkinton schools recently have been uh, ranked very high. And one of the latest rankings that came out was uh, Niche.com's ranking, ranking Hopkinton High School the 12th best in the state. What would you say the biggest accomplishment of the school committee has been since you've been a part of it? Um, so it's difficult to highlight just one accomplishment, so I might highlight three of them. Uh, I think first and foremost, uh, when I came in to the school committee, there was a lot of leadership turnover. I think the hiring and selection of Dr. McLeod as the superintendent is one of the best things we've done in my three years. I think she's the right leader for this district, and I'm very proud to have been a part of that selection process. I'm also excited about the progress we've made toward the center school solution. To be able to navigate through the MSBA process, to get to the stage with where we are, getting ready for town meeting to put forth a land acquisition for our preferred site um, has shown great progress, and I've enjoyed partnering with them as a member of that committee. Uh, and then I think third, recognizing that the rankings that we get are, are wonderful. Um, we love hearing about the, the high school rankings, but really constantly looking to shore up the foundation of our educational programs because the expectations are getting high. Now, if you're selected for a second term, what are some of your goals? Um, so I sound like a bit of a broken record here, but we're at a critical stage in that project. So I really want to see out the elementary school building project, continue to work with the community, the elementary school building committee, um, and drive towards that solution. We've done a lot of work as a school committee in the past couple of years of really I said shoring up the foundation, and by, what, by that I mean looking at primarily at the elementary grades for program improvements that we can make to help um, to help continue the great results we've seen within Hopkinton schools. So I want to continue to look at all grade levels and look for opportunities where we can continue to improve and get the results that we've had and, and that we all expect. Well, John, we wish you the best of luck at the ballot box on May 18th. Thanks okay. for joining us. Thank you very much. We are going to take a short time out on HCAM News. Coming up next, we will have an update on the Relay for Life. 
softball highlights, and Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. A lot more on the way. Stay tuned. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome back to HCAM News. You're taking a look at the Relay for Life Students vs. Teachers basketball game. The game occurred just a couple weeks ago. Up to this point, the Hopkinton Relay for Life has raised around $50,000 in the fight against cancer. For more information on upcoming events, at our first look at the 2015 Hopkinton Hillers softball squad as they took on Milford and Natick. An interleague matchup as 4-1 and one Milford out of the Hockamock took on 3-0 and oh Hopkinton out of the TVL. Kayla Sullivan got things started off for the Hillers. An RBI single drives in Molly Bennett. And that would be the last time the Hillers would score off of Milford pitcher Allie Atherton. We head to the top of the fourth. Bradley set to deliver. And this is a liner right over to short. Throw to first and they get two. Kate Wellzell fields a grounder and gets the double play. But then this happens. Line up and the pitch. This is in the air towards left field, towards the fence, and that's gone! A home run! Jill Powers goes yard, and it's one to one. Top of the fifth, the Milford bats continue. Ali Pierre Gustavo hits an RBI single to drive in Sydney Pounds. Then the following at bat, Taylor Lebrun does this. To the set, and this is ricocheted into left field. That'll drop in for a hit. Another run is going to come around to score. A second run being waved around. A two RBI double for Taylor Lebrun. Milford handed Hopkinton their first loss of the year, taking them down seven to one. Allie Atherton went the distance for Milford, striking out four. The Hillers had one run on five hits and two errors. Milford had seven runs on 13 hits and no errors. The next day, Hopkinton welcomed Natick to their home field. Molly Bennett tripled to start the game. Lizzie Kelly drove her in with a one-out single. Then this happened. This is hit in the air towards left center, and that'll drop down for a home run. As that gets past the fence, a two-run homer for Kayla Sullivan, and it's three to nothing Hillers. 3-0 Hopkinton heading to the bottom of the third with a runner on first. Kayla Sullivan does it again. Erickson to the set. This is hit in the air towards left center, towards the fence. And that's gone! Another home run! Another two-run bomb for Kayla Sullivan, her second home run of the game. It is a 5-0 Hillers lead. The Hillers added another run in the third off a Nikki Como sacrifice fly to make it six to nothing. No more runs scored until the sixth inning, but boy, did the runs come. All right, to the set. On the ground, third base side, that'll get through into left field. One run is going to score. And then after that, everyone will hold up. On the ground, that'll get through into left field. One run around to score, and everyone will hold up after that as Lizzie Kelly scores the eighth Hillers run on an RBI single by Heather Hawley. 
And a fan the pitch, and this is belted in the left field. That'll drop in for a hit. And another Hiller's run is around to score, and some trouble tracking it down to left field. And a second Hiller's run will come around to score. Mare delivers, and this is hit in the air to right field. That'll get in for a hit. Holly being waved around, and she is going to score. Mirabli being waved around as it was chased all the way to the fence. Two more Hopkinton Hillers run score. A two RBI double by Nikki Como. And that is going to do it. The mercy rule has been put in effect. And the Hopkinton Hillers have mercyed Natick 12 to nothing. The Hillers mercy Natick 12 to nothing. Bree Mirabli gets the win on the mound. Taylor Erickson the loss. Kayla Sullivan hit two two-run home runs. Lindsay Whittles, Lizzie Kelly, Kate Wellzell all scored two runs. Kayla Sullivan also scored three runs of her own and had four RBIs as the Hillers improved to four and one on the season. Be sure to be on the lookout for Hiller's softball and baseball airing on HCAM. For more information about the wide array of programs coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, May 2nd at 6 p.m., tune in to hear the 2015 State of the Town Address. On Monday, May 4th at 6.30 p.m., learn about the services that Bay Path Elder Care provides to seniors in Senior View. If there's a caregiver involved helping with everything, mm -hmm. we may just provide the cleaning, but usually we have to meet some other areas of need, such as food shopping or meal preparation. At 7 p.m., the first night of annual town meeting broadcasts live on HCAM TV. At 7 p.m. on Tuesday, May 5th, the second night of annual town meeting also goes out live on HCAM TV. And if needed, the third night of annual town meeting will air at 7 p.m. live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, May 7th at 6.30 p.m., learn about diabetes and how it can affect your health, the differences between the two types of diabetes, how it is diagnosed and treated, and more in Physician Focus. A normal A1C is a test result of 5.7 or less. And if you're between 5.7 and 6.5, you're in that pre-diabetes range. In a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry on Friday, May 8th at 6.30 p.m., Linda Havel reads her poetry on traveling and reflecting on the past. I'd rather spend my time writing about the past. But in Florence, I'll see what it's like to live in their past and present. On HCAM Ed, learn about the people who were trained as soldiers in Greece in Citizens as Soldiers, Warfare in Classical Greece. We'll also be bringing you Hiller Baseball and Softball now that the teams are back in action. It's Hiller Softball versus Norton and Hiller Softball at Bellingham. For playback dates and times of these and other games, visit hcam.tv slash schedule and hcam.tv slash education. Do you know someone who wants to be on the HCAM Insider mailing list? If so, have them send an email to me at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thanks, Courtney. Love the new haircut. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton including town meeting happenings and upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.
has gone.